Hello, everyone. Welcome back to OTD Military History. Uh, and thanks for joining me on uh, this, what is it, Tuesday afternoon where I am anyways, Tuesday evening or whatever time it is for you. Thanks for uh, for stopping in. Hopefully, this, uh, I don't want this to be too, too long just because I want to have some rewatchability. So uh, thanks, everyone, for jumping on. I know for some of you, this is your third live stream you're watching of the day. So I appreciate you coming out and uh, hanging out with me for a little bit to talk about a book review. Um, I know uh, I know Woody World War II TV had two great shows today. I was able to watch most of, of all of them, uh, the two of them. So uh, I know just kind of jamming more in there, but I finished the book that we're going to be talking about last night. Um, so I want to do a little fresh my mind. A lot of you know I have a, a new puppy, so it's hard to get things scheduled. So I figured I got today, um, finished it last night, fresh in my mind, no puppy. Let's get it going. So the book I'm going to be talking about is right here. You can see it. Let me get my face out of here so it'll focus. Uh, there we go. Michael Palin's of Monty Python uh, fame uh, called Great Uncle Harry, the Tale, A Tale of War and Empire. So before jumping in, um, I want to say thank you to Shauna Cook at Penguin Random House Canada. Sorry, I always forget the names of the publishers uh, for sending me the book. I wasn't expecting it. It was a surprise. So that was really cool. I was very confused because she sent me another book for something else I'm working on. Uh, with her for a, a live stream I'm going to get going shortly, uh, which will be more details about that later. Um, so this was a bit of a surprise. So it was great to get this. So just a bit of background uh, on my understanding of this book, right? Um, I don't think he's related. Sorry. <laughs> the live stream gets me distracted, as you all know. Andres, I don't think he's related to Sarah Palin at all, uh, which is an interesting segue about this book because I know he's written a lot on other subjects and history related and travel, you know, travel logs and all that kind of thing. And it's mentioned here, there's other documentaries. He's done a whole bunch of stuff. I haven't read anything else uh, that he has, has done, um, unfortunately. So maybe I should write that wrong because I really enjoyed this book. I do recommend it um, to read. I, I was highly engaged in this one. I like the writing style. I, as a lot of you know, I like an accessible but detailed writing style that gets you information but keeps you engaged. I think that's what it's missing from a lot of history. So this one definitely did it. So kind of the note I got from, from Shauna on this was just uh, talking about how his, uh, Palin's great uncle, Harry, uh, just fought at Gallipoli and then died at the Somme. Sorry, I just have the handwritten note here I'm reading off of. So that's all I really had. Um, so, you know, I kind of went with that and just started reading it. Um, but it, it's a really fascinating story. There's a bit on the sleeve there talking about how this is, you know, part history, part, um, a memoir, travel log, all that kind of stuff. It, detective work is used a lot. And I think that that's a fair way of looking at this book. So it really starts at looking at Harry's parents. And, and kind of how they met and, and their life, very much a middle class uh, existence in Victorian Britain uh, and what that means for, you know, them and having, you know, an Oxford educated um, religious figure father and his mother who was Irish and lost her parents in the famine and then moved to the U.S. as an orphan and then met, you know, Harry's father in Germany. I don't want to give too much of that away because it's 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 really a, it's a fascinating story and it, it really does bring together all these different elements of the British Empire that you don't tend to get to think of in a way in a personal level. So I think that was really fascinating to get to learn about all of that and how he put this all together and you know why he was looking at this in the first place. So that's a really 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 cool uh, way of looking at it. So. Again, I just want to go back to my experience again with Palin is just Monty Python, as it's being said in the sidebar here quite a bit. Uh, you know, I watched all the movies when I was a kid and younger. My dad, big fan of Monty Python. So obviously I know who he was, but hadn't done much on the on the reading. So with that also said, my, my own, I don't want to say connection, my own background on this is it's, he's looking at information about a great uncle who was lost in a war. Uh, I think that's another reason why I found this so personally and fascinating because that has, I've done the same. And an, another great uncle of mine's killed in the beaches of Normandy at Juneau, just outside Canada House there, for those of you who know that, and, and trying to piece together details of this person you've never met, who there's, you know, bit of bits and pieces and official documents and 
newspapers and, and, and whatever you can find and trying to get information about who this person was and trying to understand who they are and what happened and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So this spoke to me at really, really a deep level in that sense. Uh, Cause I haven't done anything like this extensive as Palin did with this book, but I mean, maybe one day, but, and obviously he's got more <laughs> player power behind him than I do. But, you know, that's just something that really spoke to me is that personal connection. So I think there's a lot in here for a lot of different people that are going to be finding this really, really enjoyable. And obviously the name recognition doesn't hurt. Um, yeah, it's it's really cool. So I just jotted a few things down that I wanted to, uh, to start off with here. Now, I think I said, mentioned somebody off the hop there because you can see on the thumbnail uh, that I put together. Someone mentioned it's Gallipoli. It is Gallipoli. It's just a, it's a hand-drawn map of, of Gallipoli. Um, and there's also looking uh, in the cemetery there, also on um, the thumbnail. It, it's Caterpillar Valley on the Somme where Palin is commemorated. He is one of the thousands, uh, particularly who fought on the Somme, who have no known grave. Now, Palin himself is not at Thibault, as you would imagine, that massive structure that can be seen from kilometers away um, on the Somme, you know, all those with no known grave, uh, you know, commemorated there because he fought with the New Zealanders. So again, going back to that empire theme that's in the subtitle, it's it, it's fascinating that the story that, that Palin has, Harry Palin here, going growing up in, you know, middle class, well-to-do family, <clears throat> leaving England when he gets older, not sure what he kind of wanted to do. Palin kind of goes on a, a bit of speculation. It's one of the things I did want to want to talk about um, here is there's a lot of speculation about, you know, Harry's motivations and, and some of the actions and, and all that stuff. And I'm not saying that that's, that's a bad thing here because this is obviously not a scholarly book done for, you know, and it published, you know, an academic press for tenure and all of that that goes along with this. This is just to tell a story. So I think it, it's okay in that sense because Michael Palin has been working on this one for seemingly long, long time. He first talks about when he got, you know, the diaries that the, the core of this book, which is fascinating because I, yeah, I know I love looking at a good diary. I've done a lot of it. Um, and a lot of this speaks to me as a historian. So that is something I did want to mention as well on top of this and these two are connected to each other is I think historians will enjoy this because it discover sorry, it talks about the process of writing history. You know, Palin talks about the diaries that his great uncle kept and, and what those little pieces and details and everything looks at. And, and, you know, you have to extrapolate and go off details of these tiny little pieces and, it's I think it'll speak to historians in that way and that's something I really enjoy because I've done all of this before um, using all you know one sentence or three words about a day and what that means and what's actually going on and it's a fascinating part of that so that part I think is particularly well done that he's looking into it so and like I've said um, done family history myself in this type of way you know, not genealogical research, which is, you know, tracking generations. It was really tracking one individual and seeing what the offshoots were for that. Um, so it, it sometimes that's all we can do when it comes to this type of, of family history is speculation based on the evidence that you've collected, kind of what you know, because it's family history, right? Like who you know and what they were like and what the stories you have. There's not always, you know, a ton of detail, particularly when somebody dies young in a war, or you don't even get to really meet those generations that knew this person. So that is something I just wanted to mention. So and also, and the first thing that came to my head is if you're looking for like a detailed campaign history of Gallipoli or the New Zealanders on the Somme, this is not that. It's never said to be that. Um, there is some overview given. I mean, real basics. That's all you need if you've never even heard of any of this like that it'll give you all you need to really know um but again detailed not really but detailed in terms of of palin's experience at gallipoli he, he lands on the first day um which is just absolutely wild um and his descriptions in his diary are so nonchalant hardly any detail at all about what happens um about how difficult that was i mean that is repeated time and time again through the book is the diary entries are very 
minimal in a lot of ways uh, and what he he focuses on um, Harry Palin when he's writing this um, you know it's it, it's it, it's a fascinating thing that you expect I don't know some sort of detail or you know this momentous event that we now know of and that doesn't quite happen um, in the diary right Cause the people who are at the time doing different things are experiencing it differently and don't have hindsight right like they do later on so this is a fascinating part of that and another thing that i think has value here is trying to understand our our mindset of how we do the history or how we engage in it right because michael palin as he's writing this he's like i'm surprised this didn't happen or i'm surprised he didn't write it like this or like that or what's missing here and and i think that's important because that's how history is written you know, and he just outright says it because you never see that in academic work being like, you know, I was expecting this diary to have more, you know, no historian working at a university writes that. <laughs> you know, but he can. So I think that's really cool. You know, we can kind of bring some personality into this as a, a lot of, you know, I enjoy. Uh, and just real quick here. Thank you, Robin, for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Um, the support of the channel has been amazing and really keeping me going the last uh, couple of uh, days going on here with the channel. Uh, anyway, yeah, so thank you for that. It's much appreciated. So so that's the the one thing I, I wanted to, to preface about that. It's not a campaign history. It's, it's looking at the individual level um, as much as possible, which to me is fascinating because I've done it. I find these stories, you know, ways of going about history is one of the best ways because you get to understand this stuff in a way you don't normally get with official documents and and sometimes, you know, a one-off mention in a letter or a diary that doesn't have much, but you can get this amount of documentation and the photos in this are are, are fascinating um, that he was able to get this stuff. I mean, having those connections that he has, you know, Michael Palin, who he's Michael Palin, you know, he's got that and that's amazing. Like he's talking about at one point, because he knows my, uh, Peter Jackson of, you know, Lord of the Rings, you know, they shall not grow fame and his, you know, Jackson's, as he calls it, encyclopedic knowledge of the New Zealanders in the First World War. So he was able to find um, photos uh, of, of Harry Palin at Gallipoli, which is amazing. I mean, as someone who's had people um, uh, die in a war and, and having that nothing on oh, photos that I know of, of them. That's, that's amazing to have that. Um, and very, very special for a family um, and, and, and all of that stuff. So yeah, it's, it's great for that as well. I mean, the depth on that is, is mind blowingly awesome. Um, and you want thank you for your support of the channel through uh, super chat. And uh, as a YouTube channel member, really, really appreciate it and helping my work continue on. Um, so another thing I just wrote down real quick, um, and I it's been mentioned on here. Uh, I forget, maybe it was Scott who mentioned it. Someone's talking about a documentary that, that, that Michael Palin had done um, about the last day of the First World War and all of that stuff. Uh, and Paul Reed, this is very much an aside, but Paul Reed, who's been on the channel, I had him on talking about Corselet. Uh, I'm not sure when, last year. Uh, anyway, so he, Paul Reed lived in Corselet, the town village itself. So I can't think of a better person to uh, um, look at all these details and, and, and show him around. Because he literally goes um, to the spot where his uncle is is killed because it's it's a well documented death in a sense um like a lot of the deaths it's documented in terms of this is when it happened and and this is where we think it happened this one's fairly well documented because of the person he was with survived he was in a shell hole during the attack in september uh, uh 1916 on the Somme. right this is um Sorry, I'm just trying to think. This is uh, later on, right? Like this is when, you know, Fleur's Corselet is taking place, the first use of tanks later on, really towards the end of the Somme campaign, right? It goes on, you know, later on, but this is the last big push. And that really informs how Palin's looking at that, um, you know, and go about all of that and all of that stuff. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with the chat too, so I get a little distracted. <laughs> 
Um, talking about the old breed, which I've talked about many times, which is a great book. Uh, and, and, and Eugene Sledge, who actually ended up being an academic uh, himself, being an ornithologist, but not a historian, obviously, which is fascinating. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, I mean, going to the spot where, you know, a relative was killed um, is, is extremely powerful. Um, and thank, oh, thank you, James, for uh, supporting the channel. Very much appreciated. Very helpful. Thank you. Um, is is a powerful thing to go where uh, a relative was killed, uh, and you've been doing all this digging, and you've been thinking about this for a long time. It's 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 a very powerful thing to do, um, particularly on the Somme, which I've been to myself. I've been to this particular spot close by. I mean, the Somme's fairly small, speaking, very crowded area, uh, particularly back then, uh, in terms of uh, sites and and memorials and, you know, Beaumont and Mel and the craters and all that stuff. It's a great area to visit. I enjoy going to the Somme very much and hope to be back sometime soon. Um, anyway, so so that's an incredibly powerful thing that, that Palin includes in this book is going and, and doing that and, and kind of also going to the cemetery where uh, Palin is commemorated, where his great uncle is commemorated on, on, in, in Caterpillar Valley, where the New Zealand uh, missing uh, memorial is located, right? Like the Canadians are commemorated on Vimy, the British are at Deep Ball, all that kind of stuff, right? So this is the New Zealand version and, and one I have not seen. So another one I, I might make a stop to. I want to go to this valley anyway for other reasons for, for looking at the uh, attack in September. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was a really cool part of all of this. Um, reading about that and, and that he got to have these experiences is is quite gripping. Um, just moving on. I'm just trying to think of the different things that I highlighted as I just put down stickers. Oh yeah. So this one's a really an interesting part of the book. So, so he covers, you know, going, um, you know, how his great uncle goes to, he went to India first, worked on the railroads and then worked at a tea plantation. Didn't really do well, didn't really seem to enjoy it and moves back to England. And then somehow he doesn't know how, which is very interesting. His uncle picks up and moves to New Zealand. He doesn't know why. He can only speculate. Going back talking about that speculation stuff. Um, you know, what's going on there? Uh, no idea. He had a relative there, a second cousin or something like that. So it's just, uh, again, the speculation part. So none of the, it's not every, always going to be definitive when doing this stuff. Uh, anyway, so he talks about that and, and the terrible conditions at Gallipoli and him getting out. He gets out without... Um, being wounded, which is which is fascinating. I mean, he's sick. I mean, pretty much everyone in there is sick at Gallipoli uh, because of the conditions and, and getting supplies and um, all that good stuff. So you know, it, it's crazy. Um, anyway, so he continues on, right? So so like I said before, uh, Harry's diary is sparse in a lot of places. Um, as soldiers tend to not have a lot of time to do these kinds of things, and they weren't supposed to have these um, against the rules, technically. Um, all that all that crazy stuff um, that they, he kept this. He had multiples. He talks about just before the New Zealanders kind of go over the top. Um, he had a new one ready to go uh, to write about the new stuff um, that he's going to see and do after the song, which clearly does not happen because that's where he's killed. Uh, so anyway, there's a bit of sort of digging by, by Michael Palin when looking at events mentioned in the diary. And one stuck out to me because it's a Canadian example, obviously. Um, he, Michael Palin, not, you know, not looks down on, but sometimes he says things that, you know, Harry writes things that are like, well, that's not true. That's propaganda to keep troop morale up and all that good stuff, um, which is not incorrect. Uh, that happens. However, one point, and again, this is not a big deal, but it's just something that stuck out to me, is Harry's writing about what's going on on other uh, fronts. Right, things are going, you know, well in other places. He mentions things going on against, uh, you know, the Austrians, the Russians advancing, you know, Germans. Uh, uh, convoy getting taken out in the Baltic, but also a thing that's interesting here is it's just really briefly mentioned that the Canadians have retaken all the lost trenches at Ypres, and 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 Michael Palin says, you know, none of this, this is just rumor, and none of this is true. 
and you know saying that these guys are cut off they're you know rumors they're in the trenches you know all that other stuff and it's saying that's not necessarily a bad thing but the thing is that that is accurate this is the battle of Montsorel in june 1916 right this is the canadians before they moved to the song right because they're not there on the first day um you know it's 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 going on there so it's it's really interesting that this one detail that i picked out again where we have different perspectives and how we look at things is is really cool that this part is accurate uh, because the canadians were attacked by the germans and then they pushed them back after about a week or so and the lines basically went back to where they were which is accurate and they got the right information which to me is is fascinating um the other part i do have marked is the spot where of course he's killed and going back to the the memorials and stuff i wanted to talk about because i think this gets lost a lot when it comes to the first world war i mean we see because they're all gone right all the veterans of the first world war uh gone are gone right they're, they're, the last ones died a long time ago it's been over 10 years, I think, since the last one of Britain um, or any major nation involved. Uh, anyway, so we don't really understand the scale of the loss and, and what that means, and and particularly those that have um, no known grave, right? I talked about these memorials that are massive um, and, and all that stuff. And, and talking about what that means, right? His body was never found. And Palin again speculates, was he buried, you know, where he fell? I, I, I doubt it, um, just based on what I've read and how I know this goes. Um, I, I doubt he was buried there. He was either just lost or, and it's nasty, but war is nasty. As I say all the time, he was blown to pieces, which happened a lot, um, a lot. Um on the Somme, especially with all that mud. If you've been there, it's it's no joke. Uh, anyway, so oh, I forgot to mention, if there's any questions or anything you guys want me to clarify, um, fire away. Now's a good time. Um, but yeah, I think the, the the death part is is striking because you know it's coming, right? You know that this is coming the whole time, and it still kind of sets you back. Um, I mean, that that's, that's not uncommon. Right when doing this kind of work and reading history, I mean, it's happened to me multiple times, even in stories I know. Um, yeah, I mean, sorry, I keep mentioning, keep seeing this conversation um, about the sidebar about uh, you, you know, E.B. Sledge's uh, Bible that he used to keep notes in uh, about National Archive in the U.S. Yeah, it's it's not the best way to go about that. I would give it to the Marines, the Marine Corps Museum it would be the best bet. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, that's just my two cents on that. But uh, yeah. Um, well, that's a good question. Um, oh, Medi, thanks for popping in. Yeah. Love Palin too. His stuff always sticks out to me in Monty Python. Um, hilarious. Uh, his pro style, accessible. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. I mean, a lot of history work can be so impenetrable and so whatever. So, you know, holier than thou, lofty language that nobody understands, um, which I'm not a particular fan of particularly now uh, when I'm not doing that academic work really anymore. Um, so I find it accessible. No real mistakes. I don't mean in terms of like editing, like nothing like uh, history mistakes, none of that. Um, you know, things like that going on. Completely readable kept me wanting to not stop. You know, it's one of those books I didn't really want to put down, which is rare. So that's what I do, right, for my job as well. It's, it's just reading. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's accessible in that way. And I only had to put it down because of, you know, work or taking care of the puppy. That's how usually, that's how I read the book when I, the dog was asleep and I got a few minutes I could, you know, um, steal and read a chapter or two. So I, I very much enjoyed the, the, the style, the pro style, as you ask here, James. So, and that's why I think I want to look out for his other books. Um, it's, it's definitely a good thing. Uh, but laugh or cry, no, um, because it's not that type of story, if that makes sense. Um, because you know, the death is coming, um, because it's part of the you know, the advertising of the book, and you know, it's obviously first world war, and it, it, you know, we know something's going on here. Um, so it didn't, it didn't necessarily make me cry, but you know, when you still read about it someone whose details of their life that they're learning and you know what this guy did and you know and he mentions this in the book that 
the, the, the relative that gave him the diary and all this information and stuff kind of just passed him off as, you know, he died in the war. We don't know anything. And, and, you know, that going on. So it's not that type of book. It didn't make me laugh in that sense because it was more serious. I don't know. Sometimes I say this all the time, too. But English language fails us. It's not serious in an inaccessible way, and you know all of that. But it's 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 not about you know it's just about his you know Palin's life in a lot of ways because obviously he is connected to this and he learns about his own grandparents because this is a great uncle, right? So his great grandparents and his you know, grandparents and how that happens, his grandfather because this is on his paternal side, uh, obviously, <laughs> given the last name. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so it's it, it didn't really make me laugh or cry, but that the death scene or whatever you want to call it, description, still, you know, um, set me back in, in that way because of the details that are recorded about how he died and probably the reality of what happened. Um, but again, that's the historian in me who's, again, speculating. Don't know for sure. Like the thousands that we have no idea what happened to them and never will. Um, yeah. Somebody, yes. Uh, yeah, I've seen this book too also elsewhere. I've heard about it. I was, people are posting about it on social media um, quite a bit. Um, when I got it, it's been a while just because it's been busy <laughs> lately for me. Yeah, I'm trying to keep everything, all the balls juggling in the air. Uh, I saw we were driving somewhere. I literally saw in the window of a bookstore. I was like, I know that book. <laughs> so yes, I, I would put it on a wish list. If you want a story that is a, engaging, about topics that I sure you know we know a lot about here you know the guys guys who watch my live streams live are the hardcores right you guys know the details of gallipoli and the psalm and you know what the british empire effort was like in the first world war and all of that stuff it's it's not that like i said in the beginning i know you popped in late but it, it's good at getting a story it's a great story in that sense it's well researched it's got photos it's got well-made maps that you know place you in things you know um that are going on and and you know some of the smaller villages that not everyone's aware of unless you're a real specialty you know a real specialist on the song some of these tiny little villages i forget their names and where they are exactly um so it's great in that sense i would definitely keep it on a wish list and i'm glad i have it and i'm, I'm gonna keep it <laughs> you know, sometimes i give books away if i have duplicates or i don't think it's gonna help me again uh, but i'm keeping this one for sure i'm not giving this one away i, I really enjoyed it and i'll be probably looking at it in terms of how to make writing more accessible and more engaging uh, that's sometimes how i look at books um, you know how can i use their messages or how they go about presenting their messages and making my own work better and i think this is one of those books uh, the puppy's name is Muggins. He's been on a few live streams too now i think um, he, he's very young he's only not even four months old yet so um, uh, so he's hard to keep, literally keep still, <laughs> but he will be making more appearances on the channel. I'm sure. Um, sorry, just one second here. Definitely like a human interest angle. It's all about, it's about him and his family. Basically, um, he tries to Michael Palin tries to get as much detail on all these individuals as he can. Um, yeah, his name is Muggins. It's named after a um, dog from the First World War who lived in Victoria, British Columbia and collected money. I did a live stream um, uh, about the book with uh, with Grant, who's the author of the book of Muggins, where we got the name from. Um, so yes, the dog is history connected. Shocking uh, for a historian. Um, so anyway, yes, he connects on the human level as much as he can. Uh, he talks about, you know, um, Harry's employers at certain places in India and, and in New Zealand, especially, and his friends and about this love interest. It's almost like a movie. <laughs> um, excuse me. It's like a movie in that sense, right? It's It's got the love interest that turns him down. I don't want to give too many, too many spoilers, but it's love interest that turns his proposal for marriage down because it's really in the middle of the war, and I'm sure that has to play into it. All that stuff, right? There's a lot of wartime marriages. Yeah. Um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, so it's 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 really detailed in that way because he's able to track people down because he's got a staff of people that work with him, right? Michael Palin, which is why it's not a bad thing that he writes these books, right? Historians would kill to have this sort of access and this amount of people behind him. Uh, anyway, so yeah, it's 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 a fascinating book in that sense, and and the stories that he's able to pull out and the threads that he's able to do. I mean, 
if you didn't know better, you'd think he was a professional historian and that's what he does. And, you know, not a comedy TV guy, <laughs> you know, comedy movie TV guy. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep up here. Any other questions? Fire away. Yes, uh, you got a fee. Well, if you, uh, I have the link down below for anyone who's interested. Um, you know, it's it's. Oh, and then I just had another comment that I'm going to mark and might be a good closer, uh, closing uh, thought here. So, um, real quick, it's linked down below through, through Amazon for my affiliate link. If you do want to buy, uh, click the link. There's a they call it Kindle, but you can read it on pretty much any device now. Um, including your laptop or desktop uh, of the book. There's an e-version. Um, and I highly suggest it. Uh, reading this and, and having it, I think, is is worth it um, for the stories and to really get into it and, and to check back on it again as well. Because if you know, it sparks interest in something like Gallipoli or you know what the, the Kiwis did on the Psalm, which is already done for me. I mean, I know the broad strokes, but I don't know the nitty gritty, particularly of the New Zealanders. Um, it, it's fascinating. Um, so yeah, so if you want to buy through that link, that helps me out. If you buy anything through those links, the affiliate links that I have, it really does help the channel. Um, yeah, so it's really, really interesting in that way. And it helps me and helps the channel as just like the super chats or becoming a patron or YouTube channel member. It very much is helpful. Oh, you mean on your tour? Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of or breaking letters or, you know, passages like in the diary, right? His last passage is, uh, uh, it's, it's just, you know, same old, same old, basically. And it's just the last one. And he does obviously doesn't know that. And it's just kind of describing um, what's going on. It's, it's, it's wild. Uh, yeah, I'm going to come back to this because I got some other questions. Um, oh, no. Sorry, I'm just trying to think. Just keeps firing questions at me. Yes, Muggins is a slang. Oh, loyal servant to be taken for granted. I guess that's where the name comes from. I know it's an old name. Um, I've heard it's connected to cribbage or something. It's a card game. It's also now a breed of dog, apparently, like one of those mixed breeds. Like, because Muggins is a golden doodle, right? A golden retriever a poodle. Apparently, Muggins is the name of another breed. I don't know. We just like calling them. He has many names now. It's not just Muggins. Uh, the link should work. I don't see why it wouldn't, as long as it's accessible through Amazon that you use in Germany. Because I bought, tried to buy things uh, from other like creators that I that I like on YouTube, and they had a thing, and I tried to buy one, uh, like I think it was my microphone or something, through their link, and it just it didn't work because they didn't have that exact product in the Canada Amazon, so it didn't quite work for me, and they didn't ship that particular item to Canada, even to buy it through Amazon.com. So. If you can't, it's no big deal, but it, it should be okay. But if not, please let me know. Yeah, even if you click on the link and you buy anything through Amazon, I still get credit for it. So, uh, yeah, it, it's wild. Oh, thank you, James. Yeah, and then visiting the sites is is extremely powerful, um, as it cannot be right connected to this book or anything else. Um, it happened to me multiple times where you reach uh, a cemetery of an individual that you've been studying or a couple individuals are, you know, part of a section and then you see their grave. It can be heartbreaking and it, it is. It definitely was for me. So uh, I think this is something that I did want to mention and I'm glad. Um, oh, sorry. Andreas keeps coming back. Yeah, so that's good. It should be. It's, it's fairly new. It just came out what, a month ago. Not even. Maybe just a bit more. I don't know. So they should be everywhere for now, right? The initial print run. There should be quite a few. And uh, he's a big name and he sold lots. So I don't see why not. Um, anyway, so any more questions, uh, I will get to them. But I'm just going to wax poetically here for a minute is, you know, those who die and we don't know a whole lot, right? I'm doing research right now. This is something else completely connected to another project I work with is, you know, researching about people who are buried in a, a Toronto cemetery for, for Remembrance Day coming up and, and, you know, all of that. All these details behind we often just see as a name on a tombstone or on a long list, like at the Menin Gate or Thief Ball or on Vimy or the Various American or other ones, you know, all these other sites that I've been to now. And there's so many stories out there that we just don't know for all kinds of reasons. So it's great to have this story as an example. And this is kind of an area I wanted to talk about, I forgot, is 
I think this is a great example of things that we don't think have much behind them, have fascinating details, have heartbreaking stories, fascinating stories, people that are, you know, so interesting and travel the world pre-World War One, and, you know, all of this crazy stuff and someone understanding their own life better through doing this research is is something I think is a good lesson for us all. And I wish more people would do is look at these things, dig deeper on something you think might not have much depth. Um, there's always usually something out there and that's how Palin concludes his book. And I bring it up because it's accurate. There's always usually something out there, especially now with the way things have gone with digitization and better communications. Or he's talking about literally how he's talking to somebody in the 80s who knows about this kind of stuff, who's a Python, Monty Python fan, and then, you know, interested. I think the song, no, it was a clip lead song, one of them. They were writing letters back and forth, right? Like that was difficult and took time. Now this stuff is instant, right? You guys are watching from all over. So I think that's a great thing to think of is this story would not have gotten told otherwise, and who knows what else is out there. So I think that's a good lesson to take moving forward is... And I know this is like preaching to the choir, so to speak, but, you know, maybe somebody else is watching and, you know, starts to dig or thought maybe there's nothing out there on this family member or whatever, because, you know, I always want the stories told. That's why I do what I do and with this channel, especially is to, um, you know, get stories told that wouldn't be told otherwise. Um, so that one really speaks to me as well. And I think uh, is a good thing to think about when it comes to this book and what Palin was able to do. I'm just going to see if I missed anything. Yeah, it's, it's available U.S., Canada, no problem. Yeah, Ernie Pyle, yeah, another example. All those names that he was written down. Yeah, it's... Uh, um, That's a good question, James. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's... Again, this is just my opinion. I don't think it's that way. It's not, his death isn't presented as, you know, useless or pointless. It's not presented that way. Obviously it's presented as, you know, sorrowful and, and all that stuff. I think, I think Palin has a, again, this is just speculation because it's not really mentioned in the book. But I think Palin has a really good understanding of the first world war historiography. I guess I shouldn't be surprised if he's been doing this for as long as he has of like how it's changed, right? It went from, you know, lions been led by donkeys and now we're starting to understand that that's not the case. I mean, he mentions Hag and doesn't really rip him a new one, isn't, you know, celebrating him either. So I think it's really a, a indicative of that. So I think the theme, if I had to pick one, is discovery of self and family history and what that can mean. And you know, he's starting to, see, when he's talking in this, when he's writing in the book, he starts to see things of himself, you know, which is really interesting. Uh, you know, that happens. You hear about that, right? You know, people will be like, oh, you're like, you're, you know, you're the uncle who died, you know, just like this, you know, you, the person you never met, or, you know, someone, an older relative will say, you remind me of them or you do like they do. So I think the, the way would be discovery because he talks about how he gets handed these documents by a relative who doesn't really think there's much here. And it builds over time in that documentary that was being discussed in the sidebar of, um, you know, the last day of the war and how he's learning about that at that time. And that was quite a while ago now. So it's just how this all comes full circle in a way. I'd say it's discovery and, and, and trying to dig up details that are out there and as much as possible. So I, and that again speaks to my historian heart. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems they do have a bit of a history knowledge. I mean, I think the movies kind of give that away. <laughs> well, three of them, right? All three of the movies and the skits. I bet the movies especially, right, are all kind of got a history angle to them in a lot of ways. Um, so I think that's that, that's really interesting. So any other questions? Um, let's give another minute or two because uh, I don't want this to be too, too long. But uh, kind of closing thought. Uh, the book is very interesting. I really enjoyed it. Um, come through it faster than I thought I was because I really, really enjoyed it. Um, again, not your detailed campaign of Gallipoli or the Somme or, you know, life in India pre-World War One or anything like that, but really interesting and really detailed for what Palin's trying to do. Give real kudos to this book and I highly suggest you read it. 
um, as all of you watching live and later on, hopefully have a ton of interest in history and we'll get some value out of this one. I, I definitely think it would be. Um, and I'm sure the Audible will be very interesting um, and very well good way of going about this book just because of who wrote it. <laughs> um, I think it might come off better. Um, not necessarily better, but you, you know what I mean? He's a performer. He's an, uh, he's an entertainer. He's a comedian. Um, you know, um, it's uh, it's it's going to be really, really, uh, really, really interesting way of going about it. So, but I didn't do it. I read it myself. So I don't know. If you do, let me know. Um, uh, oh, is this a question? Sorry, man. A question? Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, best book to read about World War One that give me a good overview for letter digging on your own. Oh, geez. Um, um, really, there's lots of great overviews. Um, there's probably ones I would avoid. Um, they're just a bit older. Like Taylor's First World War is a bit dated. Um, and then he has the whole issue with, you know, how he views the Nazis later on. Um, Keegan's is okay. John Keegan is well known. I thought it was pretty good. Um, really any of those overviews by any of the, you know, uh, um, big names, I would really suggest. Uh, that's the best way I would do it. Um, i trying to think of the ones I've read. I moved my bookshelves and all or anything is. Um, yeah, I mean, there's one by... Uh, well, I'm going to walk away for a second. Give me a second. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, Little little Hearts, Liddell Hearts is, is good. I mean, I wouldn't use Niall Ferguson's either because I think the argument is just bonkers. Um, things like that. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's one of those, you know, stick with the big names. In my opinion, for the overviews, the bigger the better. You know, it's it, it's it's it just gives you the details. They're they're doorstops, but the detail will really really help you. Um, but yeah, I'd stick with you know the better known British guys if that sounds bad, because um, those are the ones I know, and those are the ones that dominated the field for so long. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and Lynn McDonald, who I haven't. Uh, who does did ton and just passed away not that long ago? Um, yeah, I've no, I've read some of her stuff, little bits and pieces. Like I don't have any of the books, which I need to rectify that. Um, but some of the like detailed stuff, and that's something I've really wanted to do. But yeah, so that's what I would suggest. And uh, oh, Ivan's here, showing up from our West Coast Marine. Um, yeah, that would make perfect sense. I mean, yeah, I think he mentions he's a history major. Talk about Cambridge, yeah, for sure. Um, that comes up. Or is it Oxford? Whatever. One of the schools, um, one of the fancy dancy schools. Yeah. Yeah. So other than that, um, thanks for watching, uh, especially later on for watching this. Not. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. More questions. Uh, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd say no. Uh, newer the better because there was a lot of interest in this right around the um, centenary, right, of the war, which was, oh, the end of it was now five years ago. Yeah. Yikes. Um, uh, it's just bonkers to think about <laughs> how much has changed since then. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and Gary Sheffield is one of my favorite, you know, First World War historians, even though he does other stuff. And um, sorry, I just got struck by a question. Um, yeah, he's done tons of stuff on all kinds of different things, and I've talked to him. He's been on the channel. A fantastic historian. Um, is this a one and done read or one that won't get dusty yet? Um, it depends. Uh, it depends on how you like to read, if that makes sense. Yeah, Gary Sheffield, Betty, he's uh, world-renowned. He's been all over the place. Great historian, great guy. Um, yeah, Gary Sheffield, yeah, yeah good historian. Uh, anyway, um, depends on how you like to read, if that makes any sense. Um, I usually read fast, like, because the PhD made me read fast, because you had to read so much. Um, it just, you know, um, you had to read fast. So I, I tend to read fast. Um, this one I think might be good if you're not too, too familiar with things like Gallipoli and the song, because it gets you down to that nitty gritty, um, particularly things like the song. Like he talks about very briefly and not in any way impeding like the story, quote unquote, about like trench design, which to me is fascinating, right? Because of what his great uncle went through and the way he's writing about it in such a nonchalant, non-complaining manner. And then talking about you know what it's like to live in a trench of the Western Front, um, if if that makes sense to you, 
it makes sense in my head. Maybe I'm not communicating it that well. I mean, it's not a reference book, but it's it's a story, right? It, it's a good story. People reread the same fiction over and over again sometimes. So, I mean, it might be better to read and then if detail of interest to you, pick it out, um, you know, do it that. <laughs> oh, geez. There's always a Marine, isn't there? Uh, Bellawood, yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ivan, but not really, as you know. Um, how many do I read? Oh, geez. Um, that's a good question. Um, talk about that maybe in another AMA because I don't want this to go too much longer. Uh, a lot. Um, how many books do I have around me at the moment? Five? <laughs> just on my desk um, that I'm using. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a lot. And not so much lately because I'm doing other stuff, but it's usually a lot. And there'll be more coming up because, um, again, I don't think you've been on the channel before. I'm doing a major project on uh, Canon and Normandy. So I'm going to have a lot of go and probably four or five books, like seriously reading at a time uh, coming up. No, I have not read it. I don't have any thoughts on it. Sorry, Pete. Um, I haven't looked at it. Um, yeah. Yes, and hit the like button. Very much appreciated. And subscribing if you aren't already is it also very helpful. I'm trying to get my numbers up. Um, just a quick plea here at the end, especially for those watching later. So if you miss it, you miss it. But um, just a quick plea um, to help the channel. If you can, a lot of you have already are already patrons. You've already helped. Super chats are fantastic. They're very helpful um, as they you know come in and, and help me do my work because it's it's a lot. Um, it's a lot to do, and it's just me. Um, um, sorry, let me finish this off. You guys are flying all. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go to the replay to make sure I caught everything too, Medi. Sorry, I am. Uh, yeah, James, I know you're new to the channel, so I've talked about this before. No, I'm not writing a book. Um, it's too difficult. Um, like I do history work as my day-to-day -day, quote unquote job. I work a lot of different contracts, so it's not like one thing. So that's what I do to because I enjoy it, and that's how I pay the bills. Writing a book in my circumstances is near impossible. Um, the amount of work, um, you know, it's it's a ton of work to write a book. People want me to turn my dissertation into a book. It's going to take a ton more work and research. So I don't know when that's going to get done. I'm just not a position financially. I'm just try, I try to be honest with people with my channel because they're great supporters. And this is how I've always been with the channel. I'm just outright honest. I just, it's, it's too difficult right now for me to do. Maybe in the future, if things get better, I can start thinking about it. Um, I thought it was going to happen not too in the recent past, but it just didn't work out. Um, but maybe if the channel gets going better or something else happens, then I can. But at the current moment, no. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I could write a book, but not at this particular moment. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, yeah, back to the channel. If you can become a supporter, Patreon is the best way to do it. They take less than YouTube does, and they take hardly anything compared to YouTube. Uh, and it really helps because, like I mentioned real briefly there, my major project that's coming is on Canada and Normandy. I've already started working on the first video, which is going to be the Royal Canadian Navy um, in connection to the D-Day landings and, and their part in the campaign, beginning well before the landings themselves. Already started on that one. Uh, and also currently working on a video that I finally just nailed down the idea of what I'm going to do. For the first special service force, this is going to be a deep dive on a very niche thing at ANZO. That's the next major video. So after that one's finished, it's going to be Canada and Normandy from there on out for the foreseeable future. So if you want to see those videos be the best they can be, um, please do support the channel if you can. I know a lot of you already are, but any support you can give. Um, sorry, which video are you talking about, James? Um, yeah, I'm not sure which one you mean. Um, please give support if you can, because going to Normandy is not going to be cheap and it's not going to be easy. So any support is greatly appreciated and will help make this better, um, which I, I want it to be the best it can be because nothing like this has ever been done. Not in this step that I'm doing. It doesn't exist anywhere by anyone. So then any support you can give is, is greatly appreciated. Um, uh, oh, the one I'm on now, you mean the, the first special service force? Um, I don't know. See how timing goes. 
hoping soon. I'm hoping maybe after the 11th because it just gets busy, Remembrance Day, um, all that kind of stuff. Because um, I'm going to be going to the ceremony and things come up, questions come up, get busy, as a lot of historians do, uh, military historians do around November 11th in the Commonwealth countries. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I'm going to work on that one as much as I can. I was working on it a bit today. Um, so hopefully it won't take too, too long, but I want it to be good. So I'm going to have to go on some deep dives on some stuff. And I'm going to be doing it a little differently than I've done in the past. And uh, my patrons and YouTube channel members kind of know what I'm talking about here and kind of what some things I'm working on and looking at stuff. Um, uh, and going about doing this. Um, so um, it's going to be a different way of looking at this, using primary docs, which I use as uh, the, the, the basis of my channel, right, as an academically trained historian working in public history. The goal is to make these primary documents accessible and understandable for everybody. Uh, and it's not easy. It's still not easy for some historians. <laughs> um, I plan on going in April. Um as much as I as as, my, as I can. Uh, April is the idea um, for just all kinds of reasons. I'm hoping that stays the case. Um, yeah, um, we'll see. Um, I'm just a bit hesitant. Um, uh, it won't be there at the end of April for sure. That's not happening, um, or May, because it's going to start to get bonkers there. Pretty much right around that time. Um, yeah, it's going to be wild. Um, June will just be a madhouse in that place. The beaches will be crazy. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to go before so I can get the videos out to match the dates, right, of the landings and things like totalize and, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just a bit hesitant because things are happening as life does that might imperil the trip. So it might have to be, um, it might have to be earlier. We'll see. Uh, I don't know for sure, and I, I can't say anything. So, um, yeah, I mean, Woody will probably do a tour for you. I know he's organizing one for his channel anyway around that time. I don't know when. I forgot to ask. Um, I'm kind of hoping I'm in the area so I can help out <laughs> if that happens. Anyway, um, one last thing. I know there's going to be other questions. If you have other questions, please do save them because I'm going to do um, – yeah, can we come to – yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Love a good battlefield tour. It's been a while since I've done one. Um Last one was in May. Um, already missing it again. Uh, I'm going to be doing an AMA shortly. So if you have questions, please save them for then. Um, if, especially in depth, I want this next AMA. So that means ask me anything or Q&A, whatever you want to call it. Um, I want to get as many things ahead of time so I can give some really detailed answers about some stuff. But also off the cuff, I kind of that's why I'm envisioning it. The first half will be the detailed stuff. And then we can, you know, move on to the off the cuff stuff. Um, have both. Um, yeah. So uh, if you have any more questions about anything, um, that would be a really cool way of doing it. And just keep details uh, out on social media as well as the community post on the OTD page. I'll be mentioning that. Um, yeah. So keep up any questions or anything, you know, Brad might know, or I want to hear what Brad has to say. Um, save it for that. And hopefully it can be soon, um, maybe before or at the end of the month, Halloween. Uh, anyway, uh, if you can support the channel, please do, uh, as Ivan the Marine is telling you to do. <laughs> anyway, thanks everyone for watching and, and hearing my thoughts on, on Palin's great book. I do suggest it and yeah, put it on your, uh, Christmas holiday, birthday, whatever, buy it for me now kind of list. <laughs> um, and do get it through the link down below. Um, but everyone, thanks again for coming and hanging out. As you know, love doing the live streams and hanging out with everybody. So other than that, uh, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, Wednesday, or whatever you're watching this. Thanks again for all the support, and I'll see everybody next time. Bye, everyone.